Farsha. Um, I'm a doctor and I'm training in obstetrics and gynaecology in London, so basically means I'm a junior doctor um, working clinically. Uh, but then I also do research on the side as well, where I'm researching into um, aspects of female health in relation to space flight, and I do that with colleagues over in America. Okay, so currently on a day-to-day -day basis I'm a junior doctor, which basically means that um, get up in the morning, normally start my shift at 8 in the morning, um, go into work, we'll have ward rounds or we'll be seeing patients, operating, um, seeing patients in clinic. Um, it's a mixture of women who are pregnant versus women who have gynaecological problems, so just female health issues. Um, so seeing them maybe operating, maybe doing surgery on the day where they, they fix their problems. Um, and then that's that, that's the role there. Um, but other than that, the other aspect of my job or my work, which is also my passion as well, is that I research into the female aspects of, of space flight. Um, and so what that means is that over the last few years, I've been researching different aspects in relation to gynecological um, uh, physiology, really. Um, and, and then I'm researching into papers or studies, trying to set that up and then getting that going. But for now, that's happening in my spare time. So I've been lucky enough that over the last three years I won an award in order to help me take some time out of my clinical training. So I got three months every year to be able to do that research and that's when I went over to Houston in America to work with colleagues there. Um, but really because the momentum has started and it's really going with it now, I don't want to give up on it. So that's why I'm doing it in my own time now. So I ended up choosing um, all three sciences and maths as well for my A-levels. And then at my school, um, we had to do general studies as well. So I did physics, chemistry, biology, maths and general studies uh, for my A-levels. Um, and then at university, it was medicine, but we had to do the compulsory integrated bachelors. So that's when I took a time, time out from Imperial, went to UCL and did the integrated bachelors in physiology. Um, so overall, I had um, courses in cardiovascular health pain um, but then also did extreme environments medicine as well and then after I finished medical school um, and graduated and started my foundation training so that's clinical training um, that's when I chose to do the masters in space physiology and health at King's College London. During your medical school training you get a lot of theory and um, practical clinical side of medicine but there's not that much pure science so what some universities choose to do is they give you the option that you can do a pure science year um, and Imperial for, at Imperial that's compulsory. So even though the first two years generally is theory based, so it is science based, then that becomes an additional third year. So they call it an intercalated BSE. So it intercalates with the medical degree itself. Um, and that's where I focused on physiology. Um, so that's when I did cardiovascular and pain and, and hearing and things like that. So that all came together. Um, so I graduated at that point. And if I wanted to, I could stop there because I'd ended up with a bachelor's. Um, but then you can choose to do your further clinical training and that gives you your medical degree. So truthfully, Star Trek. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I I used to watch Star Trek as a kid, and um, I loved that Beverly Crusher was there, and she was the the onboard Doctor. So she was a real inspiration for me. And then there's Captain Janeway, who's a strong female character lead. Um, in Star Trek and so those two leads sort of really inspired me that actually do you know what as women they're going out there they're doing something okay it's completely fictional but they have that place they have that role um, and so for me I just felt like I could do anything I really wanted to do anything I wanted I didn't really feel that it's a male dominated world and so you have to stop there so there's always going to be people who say no but there's always the people that will back you and there's always the people that will say right keep going and I think I owe them a lot as well, um, because it's because of them that I have kept going. You're always going to hear no. And it's really easy, I think, when you're younger, especially, I mean, when I was 16, I thought, you know, somebody said no to me for um, astrophysics at university, um, and I accepted it. But actually, it was after that that someone said to me, do you know what, have a plan. If you want to do something, research into it. And it's those people that really were my inspiration and my role models to keep going. So, yeah, owe them a lot. <laughs> So I don't think there's a part in my career path that I couldn't say wasn't challenging. So 
making sure that you do well in school is a challenge. You've really got to work hard. Making sure you get your A-levels is hard because you want to be going out, you want to be clubbing, you want to be going drinking with your mates, but you've got to sit down and you've got to do the work. Um, even at university, I was part of quite a few clubs and societies, so it was sort of balancing that with work at university, making sure I got through medical school. I think one of the biggest challenges, though, really has been to get people to see that actually what I'm doing is worthwhile. So bringing together an area of medicine, which is women's health, that has been researched um, with an area of health that we don't really know much about, which is space medicine, and making sure people think that it's worthwhile or worth doing, um, and then trusting me to go on with that path has been one of the biggest challenges. And then there's also the prejudices that are around women's health. So the minute I say to people that I'm training in obstetrics and gynaecology, but I also have a love in space medicine, people automatically assume that I'm delivering babies in space. And that to me is frustrating because actually I think it belittles what women are here on this planet for. So we're not here just to produce babies. Women are doing every single job that men are doing right now. Um, and so I don't really feel that actually researching women's health means that I must be researching into pregnancy or pregnancy related conditions. Um, so that those I think those two have been the biggest challenges um, of my career at this point. Work is very, very time consuming. Um, so being a junior doctor is not easy. I work um, long days, I work evenings, I work nights, I work weekends. Um, so the time I have to myself is limited. Um, and I think the other the other aspect is when I do my research, I travel away from the UK. So I'm traveling for maybe two or three months at a time. So time I do have in the UK for myself is limited, but also very precious. Um, so it's that time that I really I get to spend with my family and my friends. Um, I love going to the theater. Um, I love anything sort of artistic, um, love dancing. Um, so I used to sort of learn Indian classical dancing as well. So all those sorts of aspects, um, are what fill my spare time, but also spending that time with my family and friends really who I care about. Um, I think creating that work-life balance is, is a balance of what's important to you. Um, and I think for me, those aspects, those two aspects are important. Um, and so it's how I'm able to put those together. Um, but I know that whatever moments I do have, they're very, very valuable. So I make the most of them. So I never really have a chance to sort of sit down and watch TV or sit in front of the TV because I always feel like there's something more that I could be doing. I love the fact that I'm being challenged in the work that I do. Um, and I love the fact that there are so many cynics because it means that it pushes me to do even better and keep going. Um, but there's, there's so many aspects. So with my work, I get to travel um, and that's another one of my hobbies. So I get to do that with work. Um, I get to meet people who I never ever imagined I would get to meet. So I've been lucky enough to meet some astronauts, you know, lead scientists in the world, um, and get to work with them, work alongside them. So that's a real honour. Um, and then the other aspect is that in my day-to-day -day life, I'm helping people, I'm making a difference in someone's life. So I think medicine and being a clinical doctor is sometimes quite thankless. Um, but actually, if I can go home and know that I've helped someone at the end of the day, to me, that's a real achievement. And I know that the hours I've spent at, at, in the hospital are completely worth it. So to me, I love the fact that I've got that balance of those two worlds. Find something that you love and that you care about and you're passionate about, then it doesn't really feel like work. It just feels like it's something that you want to do and you want to progress forward with. So for me, it's like I finished the projects that I was doing before, but now I'm thinking to the future and thinking, how can I take this further and how can I have it benefit more people um, or more patients? And that's, what, that's what's driving me at the moment to keep going with it. I love you, said Star Trek. <laughs> I grew up watching that thinking, oh, yeah, I want to be in Starfleet Academy. That's not going to happen. Okay.